So today we're talking about multi-generational living. Um, my name is Mandy, this is my house. I live here currently with my husband and my oldest son and for maybe three quarters of the time his girlfriend too. My younger son lives down the street about one minute within walking distance with his girlfriend and their dog. And then my daughter lives in Toronto, um, but she comes home sometimes and we have space here for her too. In the past, um, we have lived with, uh, we've lived in a townhouse with all three of our children together. We have lived in another house with our three children together and a girlfriend. And we've lived in another house with my daughter and her boyfriend from overseas who stayed with us for a few years. So it's just been sort of a mix and match of people coming and going. Uh, we've also had my oldest son's best friend stay with us quite often. So he's been sort of part of the picture. And we have lots of people just sort of coming and going as we have parented through the years our house was sort of the go-to house where people would come and hang out and just feel comfortable sort of like the community center welcomed anybody who wanted to come and stay could come and stay if i think about my own family my parents who are very important in my life when my kids were younger we would spend weekends with them every weekend we would drive an hour down the highway and stay at their house for two days bring the kids, you know, and bring the cats. Sometimes we just all kind of be in the same space together. They live with my brother who is an adult right now. And it's just sort of been the same sort of situation with them as it is here with me. People were always welcome at their house and I like it to be that way. So I think that's probably where I got that idea. What's happening? Sit down. Also, when my husband and I were first in university, we lived in the married student residences at our university, and it was uh, the best place to raise little kids. I like the idea of that. You know, we lived there for, I think it was almost 10 years. So it was sort of a townhouse situation where only people who were married and students could live there. So they were mostly older people. It wasn't like party, what you might think in a, in a university residence. It was the older people with their kids. But the great thing about it was everybody was sort of like-minded or they were educated people who took parenting very seriously and you know trying to make a difference in the world. So we would just get up in the morning and walk out our door and there would be, you know, five other mothers with their kids there that we could just sort of all be together. And for me as a mother whose partner was in medical school at the time, who was never at home, that was a great support group for me. Community was awesome. You know, if I was sick sometimes, the other mothers would look after the kids. If we needed to help each other with groceries or party planning or just going out during the day or whatever, we could always do that. We always had like women's group once a month, we'd get together without the kids and just talk about stuff. So it was a great support system. And if I think about that setting, I kind of would like to recreate something like that with my family in the future. What I mean by that is have a place where everybody sort of has their own space but we're very very close so it could be in the same building maybe it's in on the same property very close so that if you just needed to get a cup of uh, sugar you don't have to like even go down the street it's just like right there you can walk next door and you have um, somebody to help you but I think that what worked so well about that situation was that you know we were sort of nuclear families but then in a in a larger community where we were literally right beside each other. So we had our private space, but then when we wanted to be with other people, it was just so easy to do. You just walk out your door and there's, you know, 10 other kids running around playing, five other mothers just right there that you can talk to and be with. And that's sort of the problem with regular communities and um, sort of how we've set things up for ourselves. You know, you 
you meet somebody, you get married, you move away. Not everyone does this and lots of cultures try to keep their family close. But for a lot of us, you know, the, the goal is actually to like find a partner or just move away from your family. And then you're sort of on your own. And then if you have kids, you're on your own to raise them. And you know, you have to depend on your partner for a lot of things. And yes, you might have friends and acquaintances and stuff like that, but they don't live right beside you. They're not like readily available to help you if you need help, just day-to-day -day help or even just advice, you have to actually call them. You need to like go there, you need to like seek them out. It's just so much easier if you're actually in the same place where you can just have access to people for actual physical support. You know, you're, you're, you want to have a date night with your husband or whatever and you know, maybe your your parents live right next door or you have a brother who lives next door with his wife and you can just say, hey, can you watch the kids with for me tonight? As opposed to like, I have to drive across town now half an hour to bring the kids to you. And as soon as it becomes a hassle, then it just doesn't happen as often. And then you miss out on those things. Or, you know, if you're traveling and you have pets, who can watch the pets? Well, if you live in the same place, it's much easier to do that. The day-to-day -day conversations that people have, and I think that's one thing that I really appreciate about having people in the space living in my house. If you walk down the stairs and it's like, hey, how are you doing today? We maybe sit for 15 minutes and just chat about how our day is going or how the week has been going or what's bothering us or how what's, you know, what things that we've liked. And it's just easy to have access to other people who you have relationships with beyond your uh, partner it eases off the the um, sort of the expectations of the partnership so a married couple or you know boyfriend and girlfriend or mother and child or whatever you just you can mix up those interactions um, a lot easier and so that one person doesn't become your sole support system and I think that in the past you know I studied anthropology, that was one, one of my majors in my degree, and we read about these, these cultures where, you know, the women all hang out together, all hanging out in the same place, and the women hang out together, and the men hang out together, and then they mix, you know, they have their partners and their kids, and everybody just so, sort of works together to just do community things. It just seems to be a better system. Now we just see couples that can't stay together and things break down and nobody has any support. And I think a big part of the reason why, you know, marriages don't last is because you don't have that like ready support. You need to have that. You need to have breaks from your kids, all of that stuff. So having spaces that can facilitate that sort of situation, I think are a good idea, just like the university, it was called Flatsling, university residence that my husband and I lived in. Having something set up like that, where maybe your family and your friends, the people you're closest to can kind of be together in one spot. Maybe they're not always there together at the same time. Maybe, you know, some people come in for a few weeks or a month, a year, or some people travel or however it works, but you have spaces where you can come together. And um, I think that is a, is a, better idea than us having these big giant houses where we have we're separate from everybody else and then you just you like what's the point so currently the situation that i'm in we do have a bigger house which is good now because um we have people to fill it it still doesn't work perfectly for the setting that i would like to have and so we are looking to build something in the future uh, that would facilitate that sort of multi-generational living a little bit better but it works fairly well in the setting that we are and we make it we make it work and i would say some of the challenges that we have is that we don't have our like it's just a house so we have a kitchen you know we have living room bedrooms upstairs it would be nice since we have you know adult couples living in this house so my husband and i my son and his girlfriend you know um 
to have a little bit more privacy if we wanted to get away, have our own spaces, so a little kitchen space. I don't know that we always need to have people together all the time, although you could argue for that too. I mean, we're spoiled in that we, we are used to having our own space and we don't know how to communicate with other people. We don't learn how to solve problems and to just sort of be together. So we've lost that ability. And um, I think for me, there's sort of a happy medium where we could have a, have a place where it's kind of like a townhouse where, you know, we have our own space our own complete space doesn't need to be huge just enough for us to go into and be private when we want to be private and then um, a space for the other people to have that as well and then a communal space where we can come together so uh, you know a communal kitchen sort of living area outdoor spaces shared however you want to put it together just in the regular house throwing sort of a bunch of um, adult couples into one house where it's it's meant to just be for one family like one you know mother father kids it can be a little bit challenging in that you can't really get away and people do live differently you know if you talk about mess i would say we have people in the house it just makes more mess even my dad said i couldn't handle being here all the time because it's too messy for me he likes to have things a certain way. So in that situation, I would want him to have his own space that he can keep it the way he wants. And then when he, you know, if he can't handle the mess of the communal spaces, he goes into his own space and then it, it doesn't bother him. So things like that, just like, what's going on? It's fine. You just hear chips crinkling in the kitchen. When, when your son, when you're filming, when you're filming and then your son is eating chips in the kitchen, it just doesn't. You're trying to do it slow too. This is communal. This is multi generational living at its finest. Just so everybody is aware. Especially when you know you film things. The the eldest son and his partner are actually sitting over there and listening in in their office, kitchen office. Hearing the subtle jabs. Subtle jabs. You know saying. what I mean? I'm like, oh, there's a mess in here. It's I oh, make a mess too. There's no just you making there. a mess. For those of you watching it now, the housing market is cat shit. Where is he supposed to live? As a musician, what am I supposed to Where go? Where is he supposed to live? 20 something. That's true. Dollars an hour. $800,000 down payment on a house? So we're talking about money as anyway, well, right? It's a good so way to help well. the younger people so they can stay at home and raise and save some money. Even though once I think he saves all of his money, he's probably still not gonna wanna move away, so. But challenges are everybody lives differently and it's not just them making a mess. We make a mess, maybe they don't wanna be in my mess. It's just, we live different, maybe they're loud and I'm quiet or I'm quiet and they're, whatever, you know what I mean? So. We have to learn to like be together but if we had a little bit more private spaces individual private spaces it would just make it a little bit easier the other thing that i like about having a multi-generational home is that you see people as people you know we live in a world where there's lots of there's babies and teenagers and adults and seniors and they all live in the world and i think a lot of times we sort of compartmentalize those groups. So the teenagers may think about the seniors a certain way and act to them, act towards them a certain way or the, and vice versa. The seniors may think certain things about the teenagers or, you know, whatever. We kind of have in our mind these generational biases that I think when you live with people, you can't have that. And because you just see them as people, you see the similarities between you teenagers if you're in close proximity with your grandparents or whatever you just see them as people you don't see them as seniors and I think that you would be more empathetic to how they have to live and less likely to make judgment about them and all that kind of stuff so I think that that is really important and on top of that I just think we all have our different skill sets we all have different knowledge where just as an example you know, my son helping his grandfather set up his computer or, or do computer type stuff. And then my father helping my son um, talk about gardening or things that he knows about that my son would have no clue about. 
So I think that, you know, the knowledge transfers from generation to generation, it's much easier. You get a sense for people just as people, you're not categorizing them or thinking of them in, in a certain way. Now they're just people to you and you um, will treat them that way. And if you treat your grandparents that way, it's likely you're gonna treat another senior the same way when you go out into the world. So I think that that is a big lesson and a good practice just to have. A big part of this channel is creating spaces for health, but not just physical health, for our mental health, for our social health, all that kind of stuff. And I think multi-generational living and creating spaces where that can really work as it's supposed to, where the multi-generational situation can flourish or work more effectively in the space. So creating spaces that actually are anticipating that's what's going to happen and then um, being built with that in mind. So for me, I'm really excited to do that and I'm, all, I'm in the process of looking for places where we can actually create that and I hope that you will follow along as we uh, go on that journey. So this is my oldest son, Zach. And we're is just it gonna, on? It's on. I'm gonna do it to make it a special way. Okay. As you can see, it's living with him is a bit of a challenge. Mom, what in the hell are you talking about? <laughs> just, you can hold the mic. I'll, I'll hold the mic. Okay. How do you feel about living with your mother and father as a 30 something? I thought it was going well. Until today. I thought it was going well. And then I was hearing what was going on in the, and you think you're messy. the video. So that wasn't me. I was talking about me being messy and you being so clean. I actually knew she was talking about that, but this is a bad time. You caught me at a bad time. Yeah. As you can see. It's a bit of a mess. A little. I got my stuff here, merch for the band. I do play in a band. And um, so yeah, it's just messy. We had a big show this last weekend, which means it takes me a little bit of, of time to decompress. It's nice to live in a place where there is some understanding. Like it's not like she's on me all the time to clean this up. So I would understand if she was. But yeah, I like living here, to be honest. Especially because my partner can likes it here. as well. She can be here too. Oh, well, nice. you know what I mean? We like to we try to keep to our own space. We don't want to be up and everything. It's a lot of respect. We understand that it's a uh, uh, olive branch extended by allowing us to stay here. Not everybody is afforded the um, luxury of being able to yeah have a place where they can like live and work and be supported by family and be close to their family so we're very lucky it's not something that we take for granted so yeah we try to approach the space and the people in it with respect and try to facilitate you know harmony in whichever way that we can but yeah we're very lucky to be here and i like living with my parents because i was i was living out for a long time but to be able to come back after having gained experience on my own, you know, in like a different family dynamics and different relationship dynamics, you come back having a whole bunch of experience and then I can like analyze what's going on and the dynamics that exist inside of my house and inside of my family with that newfound experience and maybe offer uh, my own energy in a way that, yeah, again, facilitates just more connection and more harmony in the family. So from that perspective, it's been nice, you know, not always easy, but definitely nice to be here. How do you see the future for yourself? Well, in the future, um, you know what I mean? Big things. Well, I mean, like in terms of this living. Oh God, the second I can, I'm getting a house on my own with my girl. <laughs> we're, we're planning three to five kids. And I want all boys because I love sports. <laughs> Punching in the face. UFC, I want more UFC. I might get cut. I want football. I want soccer. I want to be the guy on the sidelines. And trust me, the minute my kid comes out of her womb, <laughs> what is going we on? are getting his ass, pat it up, and I'm gonna start Woo training his chin because no time for fucking around. To be honest, I'm you know, I'm gonna take it. Get us out of Manatic. Get us out of here. Put the family on your back, you little scruff. Chicken ass. 
That's how I feel about the future. Exactly. If you bring up this video, nice. Can it go in the video? Score. No. Comedy. You said it could be what it is. Okay. I what, heard you, what Sean. You want, what the, anyway, so, but truly, in the future, <laughs> I'm just, that's why Claudia is the best. Because I'm good to live wherever. That's so nice. Yeah, she likes this. I know. I love it. We like it. God bless. Yeah. Morning mm -hmm. hugs. Morning, Morning hugs. hugs. Because you know what? Like, that's amazing. Claudia, what? you should get her to talk a bit. Oh, no. She should talk a bit though. Well, to be honest, because yeah, like there are a lot of relationships where people want to follow the path that is like set out and programmed into our brains. Okay. I don't want to be the red pill brother or whatever. Black <laughs> pill brother. But there is a path of action that, that most people follow, you know, and, but without thinking about it and without thinking about how they might like to interface with this pattern or not. With this pattern so for me i like i as someone i'm in a band i work as a writer on youtube for my dad and kind of like advising that kind of stuff i can do that whenever i don't have to have a specific time frame in which i work i also don't like care about owning a house or having children or getting married or anything i just don't care like that's not where my values are i like hanging out with my family i like hanging out with people i love but like i don't there's i don't have these markers that i have to hit so if i'm thinking about the future it would just be like i would like to be able to feel supported and to contribute to that support but it doesn't all have to come from me yeah, so i can lean on people i'll do different things and go to bed when i want and you know we've talked about traveling and then having yeah, I'm definitely gonna need to travel as a musician as the band, you know, becomes more popular and I would love for there to be a place to come back to. To have a solid foundation, but also to be free. And yeah, I, I don't care. Like, I'm not opposed to living with my family forever. Like, it, like that would seem nice to me. If the family grows and if we are able, like lots of times when I talk to people, it seems like they want to move out and they want to get away from their family because they can't handle being around their family, which I understand, you know, your family because of how the history that you guys all have together and maybe some pain and frustration or grievances that haven't been smoothed over from the past or some things that you have that you haven't been able to process or maybe there's, you know, been traumas that have happened that are just too big to process. I understand all of that. And that, again, that's why I'm thankful. I'm in a situation where like, I actually think that the grievances and the frustrations that we've been faced with in the past are overcomable, they are surmountable, and we can do that as in the family dynamic. So if, I, if we were to create a foundation in a situation where there actually is harmony and people like being around each other, then why wouldn't I want to be there? I would want to be there. I do want to be there. So yeah, just like, kind of to work through our sticking points as a family so that we ha uh, create a foundation and a dynamic where we actually just want to be around each other. Huh? Well, you were mentioning about trauma and generational trauma. It's uh -huh. like you're face to face with- If your family. With things that would trigger you and you're forced to deal with them. Yeah, you're forced to deal with them. Exactly. But the thing about that is if you don't, if your family, like, it's like there's the yeah there's gonna be a little bit of a shit i have to face this thing right in and with alongside the people that are supposed to in terms of how we are like raised and taught and what we learn they're supposed to bring you comfort and if they don't and that disconnect is if the gulf is too big then it's just like your brain is fried and then you want to escape but yeah so like to to work through that generational trauma at, or whatever is whatever's going on in your family, because everybody has their stuff, with your family. Um, hold on a minute, what am I thinking here? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It allows, yeah. You, it allows you to take accountability for what, what, whatever ways you are also playing out those patterns still. Like, instead yeah. of just being like, it's a them thing, you have to somewhat take accountability, which instead of like going off in your own what life and then repeating those things, you are able to ensure that you're dealing with it so that when you do have children, you're not perpetuating the same thing with this uh, mentality that, oh, it's just a, like, I have no idea where this is coming from. Kind yeah. of, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, when you're with your family, you are face to face with things that you, that are sometimes difficult to face. 
And at the same time, you will want to, and it is beneficial if you can turn to those people for comfort. So simultaneously, like there's literally two opposing forces, you know, there's something that might be difficult and something that might be comforting. And to like hold the multiplicity of that truth and to be able to be in that situation that can at times be confusing and that can at times feel like what the hell is going on, but to know and to, I guess, have your vision of the future that you're working towards a place where there is actually just like more heart, like the harmony is the main thing as opposed to working through the shit all the time. Working, working through discomfort though, yeah. And yeah, working through discomfort. And as, like, it's like if, as, and like Tess said, as you, I guess, take responsibility for what you can change in yeah. yourself and then you begin to create that, like, just like steadiness and peace and the foundation within. And then it kind of, I could envision it uh, spreading out to the family and then from the family spreading out to our broader community. So that's how I would envision the future as they say. And if you are have never been exposed to uh, chip combos, some people like chips in isolation, but I would suggest two chips of uh, opposing types. This is Miss Vicky, Miss Vicky's Applewood Smoked Barbecue along with Doritos Cool Ranch, originally introduced to me by my Uncle Dave at the ripe young age of about five when we were playing Mario on Nintendo 64 wow. and listening to Nirvana, never mind. Nice, multi-generational okay, chip combo. Wow. One thing that I think is really powerful is the idea of the timelessness of wisdom. And, you know, we all, share this experience of life. We all go through our personal experience of life and gain wisdom. When you are living with multiple generations under one roof, the shared truths that we all experience, those things become evident. So, you know, we all, we usually like, I mean, certain cultures more than others, but you know, there's this idea that Young people, you know, they leave, leave the house, leave the nest, and go off and live their own individual experience. And, you know, things that their parents would say, or their elders, their grandparents, or whatever, they would tell them like, you know, this happened to me. And you'd be like, yeah, yeah, like, whatever. They don't know. Because like, now is different than back then. Like what we're dealing with and what we're facing in our lives is different than how you had it. Like, you guys are just old. So you don't really know, like you're out of touch with our time. Which, I mean, obviously there are practical differences in terms of like technological advancements and everything. But for the most part, the actual like life lessons that we learn are usually similar. And it's only when, you know, you go off and actually live your life become an adult and you know start your own family that you realize that some of the things that your elders said may actually have applied and are true and usually at that point it's kind of like you you'd consider it like you know well we we're living separate lives now like i don't really i call my grandma maybe like once a whenever it's not so easy for me to just be like go and have those conversations and being like oh yeah you know what that was actually that was actually spot on even though you know it's, it's never too late it's never too late to connect and have those conversations but yeah you usually are living your quote-unquote separate lives and don't have the chance to really acknowledge the timelessness of that wisdom whereas when you're living under one roof you are able to, I mean, just have it clearly ready for you there. Like all of those moments, all of those like moments of realization happen with each other, you know? And you're able to actually like, just again, recognize how we are all similar, going through similar experiences, no matter what time it is. I think there's just something interesting about that because Obviously there's a balance between taking someone's word for it. If someone tells you something, taking someone's word for it and wanting to experience it on your own because obviously everyone has their own perceptions and biases and stuff. So that could have been 
contributing to their interpretation of whatever happened in their life and may not be exactly applicable to your situation. But I think if you're able to have like on hand that access to the wealth of knowledge that that is wisdom, if we're able to sort of create an environment in which that is just the norm, then maybe as a society, we would be able to expand even further in our, I don't know, an understanding of life. We wouldn't keep coming into the same issues throughout the generations. If we were able to, from the get-go, be like, because of our power of connection and because we trust the people around us, like we can actually learn from what we've all experienced and have grown beyond. In terms of growth, like a lesson will keep coming up until we've acknowledged it, you know? And this gives us the perfect opportunity to sort of put our egos to the side and not be like, because you know, when people, when people are like, oh, well, I'm gonna go. I don't, I don't believe you. Like I need to go learn it myself and stuff like that. And, and to an extent, again, everyone is living their personal journey and that is valuable. But it's just like this idea of like, because we have this like individualistic mindset, like there are cultures that are very communal, but the idea of like, oh, it's gotta be, I, I don't like to like talk about like attributed to certain cultures, but like the idea of like this individualistic mindset where it's like, gotta be bigger, better, push faster. It's like, I gotta do this. I gotta prove something. It becomes almost like a unnecessary trial that we, we had to go through because we just wouldn't trust anyone around us. I mean, again, like you live and you learn and I'm not saying that it's going to be just like, like no, you're not gonna ever run into issues. I'm just saying it's interesting when you realize how powerful connection is because wisdom and connection go hand in hand. The more you realize the power of connection, the more you gain in wisdom. The more you gain in wisdom, the more you realize the power of connection. Having it all, because I mean, we like, like my mom said, like multi-generational living is already happening. Like it's already happening. It's in our world. Like there's all generations. So just having that reflected in our living environment, it seems only natural and it seems, well, it, it will just bring us closer to truth, you know, because it is the way of life, regardless of if you want to acknowledge it or not, it just is. It makes it so that all of these other things that would separate us, like the age groups and all of that, like they become irrelevant. Often in our society, we like to, yeah, group things. Be like, they're Gen Z, we're millennial. <laughs> we have these characteristics, they have those characteristics. They're out of touch, we're out of touch. Like, you understand what out of touch means? Like, like that mentality is perpetuating division in our world because these things are so irrelevant. And having multiple generations under one roof makes this clear, like that those things don't matter. The similarities are um, emphasized rather than the differences when they're living in your space, like in your space that you can't close the door on. They're living in your home. That is, you know, that's the, the way of the power of understanding and empathy and love in life within ourselves, in peace within ourselves and in peace with the people around us, with the environment around us, with the life that we are again sharing this experience with. There's the balance between honoring our personal experience and embracing community. Like I already touched on the individualistic um, way of life that we have that is very much just like external focused, externally focused, never giving ourselves the chance, like never wanting to acknowledge that we can rely on others. You know, it's just like this allowing yourself to rest, like giving yourself the balance, the inward balance, like the opportunity to connect with your your inner world and your more spiritual nature instead of it just being this outward physical pursuit like find contentment within your ability to rest and be at peace comes from your faith you know and that is like an acknowledgement that i don't have to do it all on my own you know you can rely on whether it's again others or just rely on the fact that you are cared for and loved and supplied for when you need it.
that life will supply for you. Interdependence. It's interdependence on the world around you. It's like a, yeah, an interplay with life. And instead of it being like I'm depending on others all the time, like it's just acknowledging that, you know, you don't always have to do it on your own. Because dependence comes from like a lack, like feeling like I need this from someone else, you know? And interdependence comes from feeling like you have support around you, like you have the support that you need. So of course I can, I can rely on this person or get help, ask for help if I need it. Like it comes from a healthy place because again, we are all in this together. So yeah, it's just the balance between, you know, your life and relying on community. I think that multi-generational living is um, a beneficial way for us to um, establish and maintain connection between uh, all the different parts and all the different levels of our family. So um, it allows not only for the nuclear family to be together, um, but it also allows the extended family to participate and have access to um, you know, their grandkids and potentially even their great grandkids, depending on, on how many levels of family are, are connected with one another or living together. We don't, do that. we don't do that yet, but we're working towards that. It's less of a trend in North American society, but it, it's the way that many other cultures live, including my own culture, the Jamaican culture. It's not something that we did here, um, but we're, I think, that people are kind of moving back towards that. There's there's always challenges, and I think part of that is uh, people having, um, people wanting to be together, but also wanting to have their own space, you know, and, and wanting to have their privacy. To some extent, um, you know, I, I love living with my family, and I love having my kids around and being able to see them, and. When, when they have children, I will love having my grandkids around and being able to be a part of their life. But uh, there is also a part of me that wants to have my own space so that I can just be myself and, and not have to worry about how I behave or, or you know, just if I need to decompress or I need to be by myself, um, you know, or if I had a bad day at work. Uh, there's a part of me that wants to be able to just do that in solitude. So though, though there are competing interests. Um, the desire to be with family, but also how do you reconcile that with being, having your privacy, having your space for yourself. It's, you know, I, I, if I think back to how my relatives live in Jamaica, they all live in one house and there's multiple generations and many people and nobody has their space. And, you know, it, we wouldn't necessarily do it to the same extreme that they do it in other countries. But I do remember um, being with my cousins and there's several people sleeping in a bed and that's normal. And then there are several beds in one room and that's normal. So I don't know that I necessarily want to do things to that extent, but you know, even with our own kids, our, our boys shared a room until they were into, into their late teens. So I don't I don't see a problem with that, uh, but that's one of the, the main issues I see is how to give everybody their space and give everybody their ability to have their own identity and, and have um, have room for them for themselves when everybody's piled on top of one another. And perhaps that means that we need to come up with creative ways to build the space um, so that we can have everybody together, but yet in a way that allows them to have their own space. So we need to be creative perhaps. <laughs>